Good evening. Tomorrow is the first Sunday in Advent. And so for our devotion tonight, we're going to focus on one of the major themes of Advent, hope. Sometimes there's a little confusion about hope. Is hope merely just another word for optimism and for expecting everything to be the best? Is Christian faith an optimistic faith because we embrace hope, or is it a hopeful faith, which is something different? And how do we tell the difference between the two? The distinction between optimism and hopefulness is not always clear in people's minds. Both seem to look forward to a brighter future expectantly, where everything will turn out okay. Both seem to anticipate a happy ending to the great drama of history, where all the world's ills will be healed and all the injustices set aright. Both seem to have the same end game in sight. But I would submit that optimism and hope have little to do with the future. They have everything to do with the present. It's an old joke that the optimist believes that we live in the best of all possible worlds and that the pessimist fears that this is true. The Christian, as a practitioner of hope, stakes out a different position, a middle piece of ground, if you will. We know that the world is not the best of all possible worlds because we have a vision of a better world to compare it to. We know that this is not the world of perfect peace and love, of justice, of reconciliation and fellowship. We know it's not the world of community that God intends it to be. In fact, looking around at the world, we cannot agree with the optimist that it is the best of all possible worlds. We do not expect things to get better of their own accord or as a matter of course. In fact, we could be forgiven for thinking that the world is broken down to its core, that it's irredeemable and unfixable. We might even reasonably conclude that the world is inherently troubled. And here's where we differ from the optimist, who might expect a future to be better as a result of a kind of inevitability of progress. The cross does not allow us to view the world this way. The cross reminds us of the world's brokenness, of the injustice, of its violence. At the same time, we cannot fear, alongside the pessimist, that it's never going to get better. Ours is not a faith of resignation, or worse, a faith of escapism, wherein we lament the brokenness of the world, but look forward to the day that we're able to get out of it. The empty tomb will not allow us to view the world that way. The empty tomb reminds us of God's goodness, it reminds us of God's victory, it reminds us of God's restoration of the world entire. And so we have hope in the future, not because we are convinced of humanity's essential goodness and of the inevitability of our progress. We have hope in the future because of our faith in God known through Jesus Christ. So we can certainly identify with the thoughts of the optimists and the pessimists, both. And the pessimists are right, the world is broken. And the optimists are right to envision a future where it is better. But at the end of the day, the optimist gets out of bed in the morning expecting everything to be okay. And when it fails to be better, that can shake the faith and well-being of even the most dedicated optimist. But ours is a faith that has saved us from optimism. The Christian knows that everything might not be okay and will not be okay. There will still be injustice. There will still be suffering and sorrow. But the Christian gets out of bed anyway and gets on with the work that needs to be done. That's the power of hope. That's the hope we explore during Advent.